DNA of the mycoplasma infection. So PCR is an important diagnostic point for the diagnosis of this mycoplasma infection. Now we are going to the next slide which is once again showing you the interstitial pneumonia, the morphological appearance. Once again, since it is very very common by mycoplasma infection, so atypical pneumonia is almost synonymous, almost synonymous to the mycoplasma pneumonia infection. So what to remember here? You should remember about the IgM which is also known as cold agglutinin. Why it is known as cold agglutinin? Why should we call it a cold? We call it a cold because if you look at the picture when this IgM facilitate aggregation of the RBCs they do not need a very high temperature. This kind of aggregation occur in a very low temperature and that is why it is known as cold agglutinin. Now may I ask you a question which particular temperature this aggregation of the RBCs would take place with the help of IgM? Tell me. I think I heard it right. Somebody said 35 degree Celsius. So this is the temperature when this aggregation of the RBC with the help of IgM would take place. That is why it is known as cold. So you have any question you can see some penguins here and to relax your mind because we already discussed about the cold agglutinin. So if we take these people who has a mycoplasma infection in a location where the place is very cold there is a chance this patient can undergo some ischemic change in the distal part of the body right like the toes the fingers something like that so what can happen when this patient is outside when in a very cold temperature and the patient has a mycoplasma infection who has a high level of IgM in the serum these RBCs will aggregate in the peripheral vasculature typically on the finger and we might find the Raynaud phenomenon. So what is the Raynaud phenomenon? This aggregates will block the blood vessels and we can see the sequence of color change as we discussed earlier. What is the sequence of color change? First it is white, right. After that it is blue and after that once again it is red. So this patient with a mycoplasma infection if they are exposed to a very extreme cold temperature they might show the Raynaud phenomenon. Now we are going to a subject which is known as lung abscess. If we can remember from our previous lecture, yesterday's lecture, lung abscess can be a complication of various kind of pneumonia. It is a very important complication of bronchopneumonia. So lung abscess by definition is a localized collection of neutrophil along with some necrotic lung tissue within the lungs. What are the causes? Bronchiectasis may cause it. I am discussing bronchiectasis in the class now which is a type of COPD. Aspiration of the gastric content. Sometimes the food what you are taking it may not go to the stomach. Instead it may go straight to the lung. In a situation like that we can see the lung abscess and which is a very dangerous condition. Sometime the bacterial pneumonia also produce a lung abscess. Now lung abscess if it is from the bacterial pneumonia they can produce a septic emboli. We shall discuss it later on but let me discuss the risk group people. Who are the people who can have the lung abscess? First of all this is a group of people who will show the unconsciousness, loss of consciousness, syncope. For example, the person is taking some kind of drugs, person is taking some kind of alcohol. So when this patient is under comatose condition, whatever they will try to drink or eat, somebody will try to force them to eat, you know that. 
So this food material may go straight to the lungs and as a result of this thing the patient can get a lung abscess. Anesthesia is a very dangerous one. So if you see that somebody who has experience in the surgical uh, OT or the operation theater you know that whenever there is a general anesthesia they put a gag on the mouth so that the patient will not uh, inhale or intake something not even the sputum. Patient who has a bad oral hygiene this kind of patient the infection is present in the oral cavity and from there the infection can go to the lungs as a result of this thing we can get a lung abscess. This issue is very important for your examination to remember. Risk group bad oral or dental hygiene. And regarding the causes I want you to remember the bronchiectasis as an important cause of the lung abscess. Now regarding the agents it could be any kind of agent I think you can learn this thing better in the microbiology but just want to make sure that I discuss this uh, material here we can see the mixture of anaerobic and aerobic bacteria if we see this kind of mixture of both kind of bacteria anaerobic and aerobic most likely etiology you can think that infection is coming from the oral cavity because oral cavity may have this kind of different kind of organism but the most common cause of lung abscess which is very dangerous is the staph aureus infection but remember we can think of any other organisms like streptococcus pseudomonas klebsiella as we as well as the other kind of organism as an important agent for the lung abscess now this is a very important issue about the lung abscess most of the lung abscess the infection as I discussed with you they come from the oral cavity now since the infection is coming through the oral cavity so there is a chance that this infection will go more into the right lung why it should go to the right lung because of the anatomical feature now what is the anatomical feature here if we want to draw a bronchus here we can see the left bronchus has a much more acute angle than the right one so this is the left this is the right so after the trachea trachea divides the left bronchus will produce a much more acute angle than the right one so whenever there is infection coming in from the oral cavity if you can follow this picture this infection will more easily enter into the right lung as a result of this thing lung abscess is very common in the right lung in case there is a aspiration of the content from the oral cavity but if it is a bronchiectasis or pneumonia in induced lung abscess we cannot specify that which lung is more commonly involved it, it could be any lung and in this particular scenario it is at the base lung now we are going to discuss about the radiological finding about the of the lung abscess now I want you to remember that particular word as we are discussing here air fluid level so before I discuss the lung abscess radiological point I would like to once again reiterate abscess is a type of necrosis which is known as liquefactive necrosis liquefactive necrosis I think all of us know that and as a result of this thing the necrotic material is semi solid now if the necrotic material is semi solid and lung abscess is a enclosed area what kind of finding we see if we take a x-ray of the patient now let us see this patient is producing abscess here so this round stuff is abscess and the material which is present in the abscess is a semi solid exudate so this is the exudate and think the patient is in the standing posture see so the patient is in standing posture this exudate 